Okay, so so far we have a Docker Compose file with our application container that we saw how to build, Redis, and database. And here I also want to add a new container to run Node.js. And I'm specifically going to use this for build tests, like building and compiling our CSS and JavaScript. Now I could use just the official Node image, but I want to actually build it because in addition to using Node, I want to use NPM and Yarn and all that good stuff. And those typically need some extra tools. So I'll show you what I mean. Inside of our Docker directory here, we're going to make a new folder. I'm just going to call it node. And inside of node, we're going to have a new Docker file. And I'm just going to paste this in and we'll see what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to grab the official node image and I will just use the latest tag to get the latest one and set myself as a maintainer. And I'm actually setting a working directory here. I don't need to. And typically I actually want and like to set the working directory inside of the Docker compose file, just like I did inside of our Docker compose file here where I set the working directory. I like to do that as a runtime option instead of something built ahead of time, but it's totally preference. And you might have your own use case for setting the working directory inside of the image. So that's set by default. Okay, so what am I doing here? I'm not doing much. The node containers, the official ones, are based off of Debian, which is very much like Ubuntu. So we get to do apt-get commands. So the first thing I do is I actually install yarn in case I want to use yarn instead of npm. And then I install git as well. And the reason why I install git is because yarn and npm tend to use git under the hood to grab packages. So the base container didn't come with git when the last time I tested it, so I installed that too. And then I did really similar cleanup stuff to what we saw in the application image as well. So then the next thing we just need to do is update our Docker Compose file and make a new service for Node or whatever you want to call it. I guess I could call it something like build, but I'll just call it Node. Node is kind of a generic word anyway, even though it's specifically talking about Node.js. Um, so we have a build section here and the context is Docker and our Node directory and there's a Docker file inside of that directory. Um, let's be explicit there and do Docker, Docker file. So the file path is explicitly set just like up here. And let's see. Docker node. Okay, so now that file path should be correct. The image is, let's see, I'm going to call it shipping docker slash node and I'll tag it latest. And then I can just copy some stuff here. I'm going to copy from our app service here. So I'm going to add to the same networks and the same volumes. We don't need to share a port in our case. So it's really just uh, networks and volumes. And let's see. I'm going to share, well, I'll just keep bardo.html. It doesn't matter what directory it works or is the uh, directory that gets shared into, into the node container, right? It could be anything because there's nothing running on it that cares about the bardo.html directory. In fact, I'm going to share it into the opt directory inside of the node container. And then I'll set a working dir of slash opt. So the working directory that's automatically going to be used is the opt directory, and the opt directory is also what's going to contain our application code. And since it'll see our application code, it'll be able to run uh, off of any gulp file or, or webpack file in this case, and of course grab from package.json to install the node modules directory to get packages. Okay, perfect. So over here, let's head on over here and test it. I'm going to do docker compose. I'm not going to do exec because you don't have a running node container. And in fact, we don't really want one, right? So when I do docker compose up, what's going to happen here? It's going to try to run whatever the default command for the node container is. And we can probably find out what that is of docker.com, uh, the underscore to get to the official images and I'll do node. Now let's find latest is 10 to one. And the command is just node. So node is going to do nothing by a default command, right? It's going to start node and stop, or it might go into nodes REPL, right? It's command line, but I don't really want it to do anything. So what we can do here is just set a command and this is going to be the default command it does to start up. And basically what I'm going to tell us to do is just echo high. And all that's going to do is just echo the text high and then exit. So it's just going to do nothing essentially. All right. So let's do Docker compose down. And you'll see it's just stopping our cache, our app, and our database because that's the only containers that are up right now, right? It didn't do anything with our node container. And then I'll do up dash D. And we can see it's pulling node latest. And from node latest, it's going to run our build steps from the Docker file. Great. Okay. So image for service node was built because it does not already exist, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Docker compose. 
PS. And what we see here is that it echoed high and it exited with the status code of zero, which is a success. So it's not currently running, but the container exists, which is perfect for our case. We just want the node container to be available to use so we can do things like Docker compose run and remove when we're finished. I want an instance of the node container. And what I want to do is just run yarn. I think yarn installs the command I want. Okay, great. So it's doing it, right? So it said no lock file is found. So it's going to create it and it's installing and resolving the packages. And it knows the correct packages because it's based off of the application packages.json file, package.json file. And it knows where that is already because in our Docker compose file, we are sharing the volume into the slash op directory. So we're sharing the application directory into slash opt. And then we're setting that as the working directory. So that's the directory it's working from when it spins up. So once this is done and complete, we'll have a huge node modules directory that has all the modules we need to start running things like uh, yarn watch or gulp watch or webpack watch, or whatever you need to run for building our assets, our static assets to do things like compile them together, concatenate the files and minimize them.